Hi guys, Michelle here. Welcome back to Michelle After Dark. Hi guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And yes, I know, I know I've been gone a while, but life happens. As you all know, Thanksgiving was just here and I had family in from Texas. My brother and his son were here. This was the first time me seeing my nephew since he was six months old or seven months, something like that. He is now almost seven. So I was just enjoying my time with them. And in addition to that, my mom was here from LA. So I had a full house. Life just got in the way, you guys. And I know some of you messaged me and asked me where I was and if I plan on continuing. Yes, I do, but it's just life. There were a few times where I attempted to record this particular video and it just wasn't happening. Too much background noise and not upset at them or anything like that. But I just decided to wait until my house was back to normal. So here we are. Also, you guys, I do have a blog channel. It's called The Shell Bell Life. The link is in the description box below. So if vlogs are your thing, make sure you check me out over there. I don't vlog every day and I don't vlog as much as I used to. I'm trying to work on that. But if vlogs are your style also, check us out over there. If not, and you are here just for the crime stories, thank you for being here. This case takes us overseas to Logan City, Queensland in Australia. Y'all, I have always wanted to go to Australia. I don't know, I've heard y'all got different kinds of spiders. And I don't even like the spiders here in America. And I ain't gonna say I know for sure. This is just hearsay or from what you read on the internet and everything on the internet is not true. But do y'all have spider season, stuff like that? Mm-mm. Um, I don't like anything to do with spiders. So yeah, I mean, I know there's spiders everywhere. But that reason, I'm scared to visit Australia. I've never been there, but I heard they are really like everywhere. And this may be me being naive. So if you are from Australia, if you have been there, if you know someone there, enlighten me so I can know the actual truth. I just need to know before I visit. So if you are from Australia or know someone or been there, enlighten me because I don't want to let that stop me from visiting. So anyway, this story is about 12 year old Tiali Alyssa Rose Palmer, who went by Tia. So we're just going to call her Tia. So Tia started living in foster care at the age of seven. In an interview with 60 Minutes Australia, her mother, Cindy Palmer, stated that she couldn't always provide her children with a happy and safe home life. She was in a violent relationship at the time and she actually gave her children up because she couldn't provide them a safe home life. She thought she would end up dead and then that the kids would be left alone with her abuser. So she gave them up, which is commendable because she wanted to get them out of harm's way. But that unfortunately would be a fatal decision. But at that time, Cindy was dealing with her own demons, but she felt that giving them up was a better option. So January 1st, 2015, Tiali was placed in the home of Rick, Jolene, Trent, and Joshua. Rick and Jolene had been married 25 years and Trent and Joshua were their teenage sons. Even though the Thorburns were well respected in the community, Cindy, Tia's mom, was concerned that she would be living with teenage boys, which is totally understandable. Not all teenage boys are bad, but that would be something that would be in my mind if the situation was reversed. So Cindy kept in close contact with Tia even though she was in foster care and there was a time that she was trying to get custody back when her situation had changed. So Jolene Thorburn ran a daycare out of her home and Rick was a truck driver, but he hurt his back and he started a fast food business called Nothing Healthy Here. To the outside world, Rick was a likable, easygoing guy, but in private, he was a controlling parent who his family feared, including Tia. So not long after Tia was placed with them, her behavior and whole demeanor started to change, especially around Rick. She didn't wanna be alone with him, red flag. She started running away, acting out, wearing clothes that were inappropriate for a 12 year old girl. Now, one article that I read made it seem like because of her clothes and how she was acting, because you know how it is, sometimes 12 year olds try to be older than what they are, but they try to make it seem like that was the reason for what happened to her. I don't like when they victim blame. Regardless of whether that was true or not, she was 12 years old and she did not deserve what happened to her. But then on the other hand, another article that I read said that she was a delightful girl who everyone fell in love with. She was a kind and gentle soul who loved hip hop dancing, cheerleading, animals, and horseback riding. Now, regardless of whether she was acting out or not, she was only 12 when all this happened to her. She was a child. So Tia liked school and she seemed to be settling in well. 
but it was just when she was at home with her foster family, things got a little bit difficult. So October 30th, 2015 was like any other day. Rick, her foster dad, claimed that he dropped Tia off to school at her regular time. Then he made a stop to pick up car parts and then he went home. And then around noon, the school called him telling him that Tia wasn't in school that day. Now Tia had run away before, because remember I said, once she got to the home, she was acting up. Now, whether she acted up at any other of her foster parents' homes, I don't know. I could not find anywhere that this behavior was consistent. It could have came because of the uncomfortableness and everything that she went through when she was there. So I don't know, but he said she had run away before and that she was always found within a few hours. Her birth mom, Cindy, was hoping that this was the case as well. But Rick, on the other hand, his demeanor was really strange right from the start. He was emotional, breaking down in tears, so much so that the social worker had to drive him to the police station to report her missing. But the thing is, he never acted that way when she ran away before. So her mom, Cindy, was active in the investigation, speaking to the police, looking all over town for her, her normal places that she has been found before. But Cindy said something about this time felt different. So the Thorburn family was questioned and so were her schoolmates. And they were satisfied with the questions that the family gave them and they moved on. So the police turned their attention to the sex offenders in the area. They questioned over 300 offenders and six days later, on November 5th, 2015, a fisherman found a body on the banks of the Pipama River. There was no clothes on the body, no school uniform, and she was completely naked except for her underwear. And the body had been already badly decomposed. Now this is no longer a missing person, it's a murder investigation. Then on November 16th, Tia was laid to rest. Over 600 people attended, including her schoolmates. Her foster family put on a huge show at her funeral. Rick actually carried the casket. Y'all, this is insane, but wait for it. You'll find out why I said that in a minute. The sons danced at her funeral because they liked to dance, but this was all a huge act. So months go by and still no suspect. No clues were on Tia's body because remember the body had already started to decompose very badly. And so the police just suspected that she'd skipped school that day. A passing car picked her up and kidnapped her and they had a reward out and they were just trying to find out what happened to this 12 year old girl. Finally y'all, in May of 2016, the police got an anonymous tip. If you know something, say something. Buckle up y'all cause this is a doozy. So the caller said there was a Facebook message from Trent. Trent is one of the couple's teenage sons. He confessed to a friend and said that he was sleeping with her and that she could possibly be pregnant. Hey, are you free to talk? I really need to talk right now. Anything for you, what's up? I am in trouble and don't know what to do. I know it's going to be hard for you to believe, but I'm telling the truth. Please help me. Mom and dad went out Monday to get horse feed and I was home doing my schoolwork and Tia was at home too. After mom and dad left, she told me that if I don't have sex with her, she's going to kill Lewis, my dog. And then the person told him, I definitely think you should tell them though, cause this is pretty serious. And he said, yeah, he'll do it when his parents get home that night. So then he goes on to say, I had never had sex before and she made me do that with her. So you're telling me that a 12 year old girl force herself upon a 19 year old teenage boy. I'm sorry, make it make sense. He continues with, I just want the kid gone and out of my life, but I know she's a source of income for my mom and dad. So the person advises him to tell his parents. So Trent did tell his mom that he was sleeping with Tia and his parents was convinced that she was pregnant. The family held a family meeting where Rick told his family to leave, get out of the house, Make sure you go somewhere public that everyone sees you and speak to as many people as you can. So now this perfect family was being investigated again and they discovered that Rick, good old boy Rick, had been charged with sexual abuse with two children under 12. And these kids were a part of the daycare that his wife ran out of the house. Y'all gotta be careful who watches your kids. You gotta be careful. You try to pick someone who you trust and who is well known in the community and good family and yeah, look what happened. So the police placed a recording inside the family's house. I don't know how things work over there, but they were able to 
get whatever legal documents and get approval to bug the family and they did just that. So the family was now under surveillance and the police heard everything and boy did they get an earful. They heard them rehearsing their story and that each and every one of them had to stick to the same story. So they didn't arrest them at this time because they wanted to gather more evidence to make it stick because you know how sometimes there can be these crappy lawyers that get these people off that they know did it you know so they wanted to make sure they had evidence that would stick so the police continued to question the family so jolene and josh their other son eventually confessed started to cry and he said um mom i've done something terrible and he said um i've had um a sexual encounter with tia or something to those words okay i was gonna say but they yeah, no, probably not the words but yeah i don't really remember exactly what it was then but yeah it indicated yeah. that he'd had sexual encounter with yeah, Tia. the message was clear it was yeah and i said oh my god mate i was absolutely stunned shocked i said oh mate no how could you let something like that happen i said we will deal with it rick was very concerned because he knows the implications for a boy of his age with a girl of her age of course he was adamant about him doing jail time that he would go to jail for something like this yeah. So we were concerned she could be pregnant or something. They said that it happened on October 29th and that Trent was afraid that he was going to go to jail and that they were so afraid of Rick that they went along with his plan. So the day that he had told his family to leave and go out where you could be seen, Rick had killed Tia, put her body in the family shed and then the family returned home. He told them that she was gone and that he had taken care of it. Said that she is no longer with us. And Josh, the son, said that he didn't cry. You know, Rick, when he told him that, he said it matter of factly and that he did it to protect Trent. So even after they had confessed, Rick was still keeping up the lie, which I'm sorry, but if one of my children did something against the law, I'm calling 911. Come and get her. I come and get him. Cause I ain't going to jail over no foolishness my kids done did. Mm -mm. So to my adult children, if you are watching this, don't get in trouble with the law cause mama gonna sing like a bird. Tweet, tweet. You ain't bringing me down with you. Ain't gonna happen. Rick was keeping up the lie, but with the help of CCTV, they were able to see that. He did in fact drive by her school that morning, but he didn't stop. He slowed down. But because at this time, his wife and son had already confessed and they had the listening devices in their house. On December 20th, 2016, the whole family was arrested. And after Rick was arrested, he threatened to hurt himself, but it didn't work. And I'm sorry, not sorry, but if you hurt yourself and succeed, you are not seeing the pearly gates, bruh, and that's just a fact. So Trent was convicted of incest, and I guess they call it incest because even though that wasn't his biological sister it was his foster sister so he was convicted of incest and attempting to pervert the course of justice and two counts of perjury and y'all guess how long he served only four years in prison josh the other brother served three months and jolene served 18 months so these three are out living their best life i don't know if it's the best life but they're out living their life little tia is gone and they found out later that tia had told her foster mom jolene about the abuse but she had failed to do anything about it i personally think they all deserve more time they were just as guilty for the murder as he was because they knew when they left the house. They knew what was going to take place, even if they were so afraid of him that, oh my gosh, he's this big dictatorship and he's gonna do harm to us. Why didn't they drive to the police station? Why didn't they call the police? They deserved more time than what they got. That's just my opinion. And when Trent was in jail, he was attacked in prison and a lot of people were happy about that. So Rick pled guilty because they had a red handed. There was nothing he could say. They had him on tape. His family confessed. So he pled guilty and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for 20 years. Even if he went up for parole then, he probably wouldn't get out. But I don't know the rules of Australia, so. Conduct throughout all of the offending is made more shocking for the deliberateness of your actions and your willingness to coerce every member of your family to maintain false accounts in an effort to cover up your despicable behavior. So y'all, Rick did speak up. Y'all want to know what he said? I'm going to read it to you. He said, there's been a lot of speculation about the cause of Tia's death. I was never given the opportunity in court to give an account of what happened. On the night Tia died, she and I got into an argument. 
She was messing around and wouldn't go to bed. I don't believe none of this. She was being stubborn and it escalated into her running away again. She packed her bed as she headed off. I tried to talk her into coming back into the house and told her that she was being silly. I followed her down the driveway to the front gate, which is about 200 meters, and decided that I would bring her back to the house. Listen to this, y'all. I got my arm around her and tried to walk her back. She started struggling and I had to hold her tighter. She started screaming and swearing at me and I told her to stop because our neighbor was close to our driveway and it was very late at night. It got worse so I put my hand over her mouth and kept going. When we got to the veranda, I let her go and she fell to the ground. I picked her up and put her on the seat and she fell to the side again. She didn't respond to me when I spoke to her. Her eyes were closed and I didn't think she was breathing. I must have accidentally suffocated her. Yeah, it says that. Y'all can look it up. This is what he said. I must have accidentally suffocated her with my hand over her mouth, holding her so tightly around her waist. I don't remember anything that happened after this. I don't know if I tried to resuscitate her. I know that I'm responsible for Tia's death and it's something that I struggle to live with. I am truly sorry. You're sorry you got caught. You're not sorry that she's dead because you were trying to protect your son because you didn't want your good reputation of your family to go down the tubes. So this monster who was supposed to be there for families that couldn't because they were foster parents, right? You were supposed to show her love and care for her during a time where her birth family, her birth mother could not. And then you conspired with your whole family to cover up her murder and got nerve to help carry her coffin at the funeral. Remember that? Let me show you this again. The fact that they so easily covered up her murder and none of them had the courage to come forward in the beginning is shameful. They said it was because they were afraid of Rick, which may or may not be the truth, but these people just wanted to keep up their appearances and to keep their good name and to keep their family together, not caring how it's tearing another family apart. So even though Rick did not give the details on how Tia died, the police think that after he put her body in the shed, he waited till the next day, he took her body to his car, he purposely left his phone at home so it wouldn't ping on any towers, dumped her in the river, and took ways back home that did not have CCTV. So all that crying he did in court and when he read his, you know, little speech, nah bruh. No, you can cry crocodile tears all you want. You're not sorry you killed her. You're sorry you got caught. And that my friends is the story of how little Tiali Palmer was murdered by people who was supposed to protect her when her birth mom couldn't. Oh, and y'all, I was gonna leave this part out. Tiali was not even pregnant. Yeah, let's talk about this in the comments. What do y'all think? This is crazy to me. This blows my mind so much and I don't know, lately y'all, I've been on a roll with child murders and stuff like that. And I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just drawn to the story and probably it's because I don't see and I can't understand how someone who is put in a position to protect a child. I don't know, I just can't not for the life of me understand how some mothers and whether it be foster mothers or whatever, foster fathers, and how can you do this to a child? who is so innocent and regardless, and I hate when they victim blame, I hate that. Regardless, if she was out there doing all the things that they said that she did, she still did not deserve what happened to her because she already had a rough life. That's the reason why she was in foster care. So yeah, okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hopefully I will see you on my other channel. Like I said, if not, if that's not your thing, thank you for being here. And I promise you it won't be that long for my next video. Leave me suggestions down below and I will add it to my list. Thank you guys.